<clears throat> again, reconnaissance is hard, reconnaissance is important, and there are different ways to do that. Let's start from with reviewing the first category, and uh, that's uh, the goals. Okay, so uh, first of all, remember this rule. Yeah, so it's not like the time you spend to the reconnaissance uh, relevant to other activities. It's uh, it's more of a weight of its value. Okay, so uh, <laughs> reconnaissance could <laughs> could much could, could consume much more time, I would say, uh, or much less time. But still, its importance in uh, the final value of your report is around that. It's like four times more important than anything else you do. Yeah, and it's uh, even from the perspective of penetration testing services company, it's very important because it uh, it can be automated. Uh, it can be uh, it, it can help you uh, be more business effective and so on. So what are the goals? The goals are to collect as much information as possible, and uh, the types are passive and active reconnaissance activities. Uh, the difference between these two is uh, rather mm, not very apparent nowadays because first of all, uh, you cannot do uh, these two things separately. We always perform some activities, activities and they just fall down into one of these categories. Uh, and second of all, you have tools, of course, you automate, and uh, these tools uh, normally do a little bit of both. You know, so there is no just like passive reconnaissance category in your toolkit. <laughs> there is just a tool that can be used for this or for that purpose. Uh, yeah, again, once again, there is a lot of work to do, but it can be massively automated, and that's a good thing. So what's the difference? The principal difference is that uh, when you interact with some systems that are other than clients, okay, you do that passively. So if you do not interact with the client systems in a way they don't expect you to, this is passive. If you interact with the client systems in a way that is different from normal operations, this is already active, okay? So, uh, if you, like, search Google, or you even automate these searches through Google API, or you, I don't know, you run Recon NG against some very limited number of uh, highly probable subdomains, yeah? you do a passive reconnaissance. If you start to interact with the services, to validate the emails you have found or guessed, to perform various types of scripted and automated activities against their services, that's most probably a sign of active reconnaissance already. Okay, so if you perform things manually, if you look to them as a normal client, they see day to day, and you do not uh, leave these boundaries of expected behavior, this is passive reconnaissance. You will remain under the radar of their security teams, uh, most probably, yeah. So the most clients won't recognize you as uh, an active hacking reconnaissance in action, okay? And if you start to do some hacking stuff, right, you automate, you write down some Python scripts that uh, try to uh, interact with the services and uh, find out more about what they do and what their contents are, that's most probably already active reconnaissance. By all accounts, it's active reconnaissance already. Okay, so <clears throat> what should you look for? There is no specific limitation to what you should look for during the reconnaissance. As you already know, you have to find out as much about the scope as possible so uh, you have to find all available data yeah uh, or at least as much data as possible but you should focus on uh, specific things that have perspective and what they are they are networks that belong to the client right the names ip addresses urls of uh, all applications and services they possess right uh, specific uh, servers, like special purpose service for name resolution, for mail transfers, for webmail access, and so on, 
like I don't know VPNs, VPN servers, um, different type of stuff. Uh, of course, software and configurations. If you can find out about what versions of software are actual at uh, the client's equipment, this uh, this this would be sweet. Your your pen test uh, would be very pleasant starting from that point in time. And configurations. That's unfortunate, uh, but sometimes you can find them online too. At some forums uh, discussing security problems, an admin who is desperate is posting a portion of configuration. That's uh, that's not something a uh, an average system administrator nowadays would do, but back in the day that was very popular. Okay, and uh, that's that's all technical data. That's or that, that's more pertaining to the technical assets. What about uh, uh, the personnel, the people data? So that is uh, critical for performing social engineering pen tests, but it can be uh, important for other types of attack as well. For example. You could guess login names for your password boot forcing uh, scripts uh, during your reconnaissance phase when you find out how the people are, uh, what the people are, what are their names, and what are the conventions of uh, forming login names or emails or whatever. So uh, you will be interested in creating this <coughs> database of uh, openly available information about the personnel, starting from full names through contacts like email and uh, phone numbers, uh, instant messaging accounts, social media accounts, uh, interests, hobbies, life stories, uh, anything related to them, anything they are fond of, uh, their skills they showcase in resumes and uh, on the job sites and their work history as well. Uh, and the most creepy, I guess, uh, the creepiest one is geodata because uh, that's not like you're stalking someone or, or something like that. That's uh, that's that may be very important just to find out how often people uh, visit uh, certain places. So you will definitely be interested in uh, finding out whether they have night shifts, right? So maybe you will have to narrow down your attack window to night hours just because you know that there is no one there right 